So to look at is on texturing, and we'll be taking us on texturing today. Hello, Desi, good evening. Hello, good evening, Deji. Yeah. And good evening, everyone. Yeah. I have to upload for the 10. All right. No problem. Uh, yes, we can start now if everybody is here. I think we have two other people. I hope they are learning too. Okay. Yeah, we are ready. We can start now. Okay. All right, guys. So, uh, we'll be learning texturing today. And uh, I'd give you lessons on how to texture your models with images. Okay. Image texturing, basically. And then we would introduce material nodes, procedural texturing using shading, shader editors, okay? And applying multiple to get and how to UV unwrap. I'll explain most of these uh, terminologies as we go through the class, all right? Mm. Talking about image texturing briefly, you know that, uh, 3D design is about trying to model near realistic objects, and using them for either an animation video or game uh, development and any other thing, maybe visualization for engineering projects and the rest of them. So texturing brings your model close towards the and what the object would look like in reality, okay? So that's where we, we are right now. I'll be sharing my screen and we'll go right into Blender. And I hope you have your Blender running as we, as we go. Tell me when you can see my screen, please. Are we still sharing the screen? Are you sharing your screen already? Oh, I think it got logged off. Probably service is no longer on the um, participant list. We probably got logged off due, due to service issues. Okay, so let's let me take over for him until he comes back. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, that's good. Not anymore. Okay, no, I can't see your screen. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, we can see it now. 
Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah we can see your screen now. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go to Blender. Um, I think they said the first thing we'll be talking on is um image texturing. And let's just start on a new page. Image texturing is when you apply a, an image taken from the real world. Uh, Sorry, real world, and you have gone. Go on. Someone was asking the question just now. Okay, let's just continue the class. I explained that image texturing is when you use an image that exists in the real world. You take an image of something that exists in the real world and apply that image as a sort of color to your blender. So rather than using a singular color, the blender optimizes that image as the color to your objects, your 3D objects. Let me go into Blender so we can see what I'm talking about. Now, unfortunately, you don't have any image prepared. That's sorry. Let me just quickly get an image ready to go. Have some Blender folder. Let's just move on. Okay, so an image texture is when you apply an image as a sort of color to your objects in Blender. And the easiest way to do this is to download the image of, of the internet or take an image yourself. So let me open the table we created last week in class. So I can apply an image texture to one of the tables. Let me hide every other thing. Okay, let me use the wardrobe actually. That'll be easier to do. This is just one object. I did that in else. Let's select the wardrobe and view that. Okay. So, so apply an image texture to an object. Once you have the image ready, you photo need to get the image ready. And once you have the image, you come to, you can use your shading editor here, or you can use this button, the material property on the property panels. I hope you can remember that, I did that in first class. The property panel, the material window on the property panel. You add a new, create a new um, material for your, create a new material for your image, for your object, sorry. Can we see my screen? Now we're following. You can't see the material panel. You can't see the material panel. This is the property panel. This part here. Let me elongate that. This is the property panel over here. Okay, great. And then this is the material window, material panel in the property window. Sorry. So if you come over to this dot here, the first dot. You can see here uh, all the type of textures you can add. There are various types. We'll go over that when we come to procedural texturing. But you have to click on image texture. Click on image texture to add the, the texture of the image you want. Click on image texture to add the texture of the image you want. So you click on new. So I click on open. Means when you want to create image on Blender, click on open. Then you go to the image you want to apply the image texture. Go to the file you saved your image your image in. You just get to pick up any random file from anywhere, I guess. 
Let me just use this. And you open the image on Blender. Now, to actually view what you've done, you have to come to your viewport shading. You can see it's, this doesn't work well. Let's download the wood texture. Just straight up wood. I must have done that before. Okay, you can see something like this. Let's download this image. And that's actually, there are sites dedicated to providing just various forms of image textures for Blender and for other 3D softwares. There are sites dedicated to creating um, textures for Blender and other 3D softwares. And um, this is just one of, I just came to image, image straight up, but the most popular one is, I hope I have to come up here. Oh, it didn't come up weirdly. Well, I can't remember what it's called right now, but I would um, send you a link to the file on the Slack group chat. So I've downloaded my texture now. I can apply it over here. So the basic steps remain the same. You click on, after selecting the image texture, this yellow button is where you select the texture you want. On that texture, as you can see image texture. Let's select image texture open then come to downloads click on wood blend and open your image and you can see this that apply the texture of the wood to the blender do we get that are we clear clear on that any questions no hello i can't hear you sorry i can't hear you like, you take the the part where you started, it's how you um choosing the materials from like from, from blender. So we can hardly hear. Yeah. Okay, you can't hear me. Okay, let's go over it again. Am I clear now? At all. I'm not clear. Interesting. Yeah, no, you're still brave. Yes, yeah, it's clear. It's clear. It's clear. Is it clear, clear. now? Hello, am I clear now? Any other person? You're still breaking. That's probably yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably service then. If I'm still breaking to you, it's probably your service. Try and get that sorted out. But um, since I'm clear to every other person, I'll have to move on. So let's go back from the beginning again. Away from the beginning, so every object is given a random texture in Blender. Every object is given a normal texture, it's a standard texture. And if you come to your property panel, your property panel here, you can see this thing that looks like an easel at the bottom. That's the um, material texture, material properties. So you click on new, that's to apply a texture to a material. and um, Blender automatically applies this kind of off-white texture to every material. It's not exactly white, it's off-white. And I'll remember to come to the viewport shading. If not, it will just be seeing the normal Blender gray. So we have to move to viewport shading first. Move to viewport shading or rendering view. Or render view, but we want to stay on viewport shading because render view takes a lot more time and takes into consideration the lighting of your scene. So let's stay on view. Um, Let's stay on Blender view for now. So we come here. Then you can see after applying a new shading, we can see the properties of the new texture we applied. But we don't want to deal with any of this. We just want to apply an image over an object. And so what we come to do is we click on this yellow dot beside our base color and then click on image texture. Then we open a new image. It's a bring in a sort of menu you go to where you've saved the image and open it. You can double click to just open it. Then wait for it to apply. It applies the image to the texture to what you want. It applies the image texture to what you've wanted already. So are we clear on that? Are we clear on that? Any question? 
Oh, my, can you hear me? Sorry, sorry to bring you back. Sorry to no, no problem. I, I just, uh, there was issue with light. I don't join, but did you just create this, um, this, uh, what you? Yeah, no, 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 no. I created it before the class. We should okay. not have to do this now. Or is okay, anybody else going to have to create this? Hello? Is there anybody here that doesn't know how to make this wardrobe? It's a simple cube and boolean now. Yes, I, I can do it. I'm just um, asking. I wanted to follow the okay, class. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm applying a texture to the wardrobe. So we created we created a new texture for the wardrobe, and then we displaced the um, standard Blender setting with an image texture using this yellow button here. So going to click on image texture. Then you open and apply a texture from where you, whatever folder you saved it at. Any other question from anybody else? Thank you, sir. No problem. So let's move on. That's basically all there is to image texture. That's basically all there is to image texture. Is when you get to procedural texture and material notes that things become interesting. And it's also the most annoying part of Blender to me, but we'll move on. For me, I mean. So Things become interesting when you come to material nodes and procedural texturing. So let me first um, cancel this and return to the normal mode. Yeah, to this. So let's come to shading. Let's go to our shading viewport. Remember, in first, I said I was going to touch more on this later. Come up to our shading viewport. This kind of view to what we're working on. So, great. So when I share the viewport now, as you can see, this shading viewport has automatically added that same texture that we worked with there before, but it has added it in a more uniform way. And it's called the principal BDF, BDS, BSD, BSDF. It's called the principal BSDF. This was actually just added from like Blender 2.8, I believe. Other versions of Blender didn't have this. You have to apply each texture separately. But this principal BSDF is really, really amazing. This is the basic and singular most powerful tool for procedural texturing that we, you will ever need for Blender. You can create an infinite number of things here. But we'll just go over the basic. We we'll go back the basic, um, basic things here. Don't get scared about this number of files that, um, number of panels you're saying. Just ignore them. It's not everything you use. It's not everything you need to touch all of the time. We'll go by the basic ones, and then we'll move on. Hello, Dozier. Yes, yes, Deji. Yeah, we're about to start on, on the. Yeah, I know. We're about to all start right. on material. Do you like to take over? Yes, I would like to. Okay, let me just my screen. Okay. Sorry for the um, confusion, everybody else. So what's your dosier? All right. I'm sharing now. So can you guys see my screen, please? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, get right into it. All right. I'll quickly make a, a very simple model, something that looks like a charger head with this. And Okay, I think this is okay. All right, I hope everyone can see what I'm doing. You must have learned most of these things in the modeling class. Yes, we can, and I believe we have. All right. 
all right so these are just uh, it's going to look like a stool eventually we would use this to uh texture and put materials all right so this is what we have i'll rotate it now Okay, so having this this uh, object or component, I don't know, Daddy. Have you showed them how to put? Uh, how to put what? Have I shown them how to put what? I hope we're still connected. Yeah, but I can't hear you. We're asking. Have I shown them how to put what? Color material, different colors. No, all I did so far was um this thing, image text. You have to apply an image to an object. Now this is just one material. Yeah. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. How to put different colors on the same object? Oh, I think you broke a bit for a while. So uh, I'll show you guys how to put uh, different colors on this object. So Side is breaking. The screen has freeze, though. I can't hear him anymore. Let me just go on. I guess most are having serious connection issues. But I'm just going to the class. I never predict network. That's unfortunate. But we'll try and Oh, does he, can you see me? I think I'm staying close. Yeah. Let's see you. Can we see my screen? Can we see my screen? Not yet. Okay. Still on the your screen. And it says I'm screen sharing here. Yeah. Um, hold on. How about now? Can we see it now? No. Okay, hold on for a minute. Let me know what you can see my screen. But I'll see your screen now. Okay, that's great. Okay, that's great. So let's move on. We'll be moving to Blender. I'm on Blender. I hope you can see that. So yes, sir. Go okay. Yes. Let's go back to the sharing editor. We'll come back to the color, multiple color on one part of the screen on various objects later. Let's go back to the shading editor. So we're talking about the principle with BSDF. And let me just increase this so you can see it more clearly. Uh, 
as you can see, Blender, when it came to the shading mode, Blender automatically created more windows. This is the UV unwrapping window, and this is the folder when they want to add any color, add any um, folder for your system outside of Blender. And you can see Blender does that whenever you change any new window, it automatically creates the appropriate any um, workspace. It automatically creates the appropriate window for the workspace you are in. So for shading, it's automatically added this extra tool. But we won't need to touch that for today. Let's just focus on this main tool here. The material, the mat, um, material viewport of this, of your object, and then your nodal viewports. So we can see the principal BSDF. So this, like I was saying, is a very powerful tool that was added about two editions ago, around 2019, I believe. And it can be used to add various, various textures to a single object just by using this principal BSDF, BSDF alone. So don't get scared about all the things you're seeing here, yeah, clear code, roughness, transmission, shame. Most of the time you need to touch all of them. Let's just go by the basic ones you need to touch. So the first one is your base color. And that's quite simple enough. Click on the white style here and a color wheel comes up. You can apply the color from anywhere on this wheel to this to your object. It automatically changes color. The scroll down here is for increasing the darkness of that color. You can make it extremely dark or extremely bright or extremely dark. Taking it to the bottom at any will make it completely black. So we don't want to do that. Let's simply do this. Let's add a brownish texture, sort of like wood. Forgive me, I'm very bad with color. So this might be off wood brown a little bit. Let me just try. So, is this okay? Is this okay? Hello? Yes, it is. Okay, that's... Uh, hello? I'm pretty sure I'm quite colorblind, but I'm not... I've never got myself tested before, but... That's out of the class. But this should do. Yeah, that's... Can you, can you click on the color? Let me see the color code. This is the, oh, you don't have to use the exact thing. Just choose what is right for you. For HSB, this is for RGB. That's red, green, blue from the primary color scale. I usually work on this. You have to get a precise color. You can actually Google the RGB values for some colors and apply it directly from here if you're worried about making the color exact. That's what I usually do. When I'm when I need to have an exact color because I'm not exactly good with color like I said earlier, but this should work. This looks brown. It looks a bit orangish, but no, it's like chocolate a bit, I guess. But this should work. So we have the color. That's how to apply the base color. Simply put, just click on this wheel that's usually white and apply whatever color you want. Let's leave it at this. So now, move to subsurface. Now, subsurface is a phenomenon that not every object um, exhibits, but some do. And what subsurface is all about is for some objects, light passes through. Light passes through some objects and goes into the object. We have things like your skin. If you hold a touch light to some part of to some part of your skin, you can see. You can basically see. Um, your skin gets a bit reddish. And that's because of the light is passing through your skin and it's lighting up the red color of your blood in your skin. And some food objects too, like um, like bread. Um, light passes through the loaf and goes into the bread. And that's what subsurface is all about. Subsurface is about the physics that governs light going into an object. For our wood objects, we won't need it because wood is plain, so the light doesn't go through wood. The bounces of the top. So we only need, we only need some surface or the subsurface radius for our wood or even the color. And the point of this color is like I and the example I gave with the screen with the skin. The skin is brownish in color for most people anyway. For most of us here, anyway. Um skin is brownish, but when light goes through it, the objects, the objects um it gives off. The light, um, the color it gives off is reddish because it's bouncing off the color of the blood in our skins. 
So that's why the substitute color is also here. Um, is to give us the light to give to color the light that bounces back outward when you are when the light goes through an object. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Hello, can you hear me? No question so far. Okay, I see Doji. Hello? Yes, I'm here. I'm here, but uh, I can't trust my network anymore after the challenge. I'll just be here as a guest, and let's see, maybe towards the end of the class, I'll make some contribution. You can carry on. You can carry on, Deji, please. Hello, is anyone talking? I can't hear uh, no. Oh, okay. I, I, oh, Deji is not here right now. So, hello, guys. I'm Doze, and sorry for the challenge I've been having with my network. I hope you can hear me. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, I'll just you. pick up from where Deji stopped and let's see when he joins. I'll share my screen now and please tell me when you can see it. Feel free to say something when you can see my screen. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. All right. So I'll just get us right to where Deji was. Explain on nodes. Okay. So, if we if we were following Deji, I think this is where he was explaining this stuff, right? And was trying to um, explain light passing through an object. I didn't hear, please. This way. Oh yes. Yes, like he was person. explaining this panel. Yeah, so I'm, I'm having an issue navigating to this panel. I don't know if I'm going to put in this particular tab. It's right here. Go. Okay. Subsurface. All right. right. Subsurface right here. If you can see my screen, you'd see. Yes. Yeah, I can. I can. See. Just so like, subsurface, as he was point. saying. Okay, you want to get to this point on your screen, right? Yes, yes. This particular now, property. okay. Now you notice that your on your on your uh, yes on your screen you have this. So move your mouse down here. You can drag up this. So your screen is divided. All right. If you don't do it this way, you can also divide your screen by doing this. So move your mouse to the corner, this edge, you see that it changes. Okay. 
it changes to a cross and you can divide your screen to as many as possible okay so i'll i'll get that out of the way now you want to replace the click and drag it into the other screen you want to disappear and it goes away all right so when you come to this place once you drag it up you won't see this immediately you have to come to this corner editor type right yes. click yes. editor type and look for shader editor yes. all right yes. yes so shader editor you see this icon would now replace the one you have here and would be in our shader editor screen all right yes, yes. okay so let me get on to it um so the base color as he put i think he put a brown base color because we're kind of working with a wood so i'll put something that looks like a brown base color all right now the subsurface is the inner material or the component when he mentioned bread you know subsurface is like the soft Only inner one. part of the bread mm -hmm. not the part so you're, you're not a viewport shaving. Oh, yeah, color it. Yes, why is the color not applying to your model? Okay. Oh, okay, okay, because I have not activated it here. If you can see my screen, I have used nodes, right? So yeah. I have to use nodes for the object you see now when i say use nodes the of the color i have selected here reflects in this place okay so this is the color i'm expecting this model to have and i'm going to make it come here now object Sorry. Select everything and assign it. Okay. So when B, what's this one? Now? So I guess you're not view cost shaping. View cost shaping mode. Oh. Uh, yeah, I just noticed modeling. I'm not on modeling. I'm still on layout here. And possibly, but then let me see. This should come. Okay. Let's just go to modeling and have this. It's still not. Not coming. Yes, I mean the modes are the are the top right. Still not coming. Viewport shading, uh, uh, render. Yeah, now yeah, I don't. Yeah. Don't have any matter. The wireframe, viewport, render. Is on no material preview mode. Can you guys still see my screen? Because I think my next talk. Yes, sir. I can see. It's gone for a bit. I mean, okay, okay. at the top we'll right, material preview mode. Oh, this. Yes, sir. Okay, that's correct. So let me put this material back. 
that's correct. So that's correct. It means he was there all along and I wasn't just in the material a uh, viewport shading, like you said. So let's come back to um the shady, shader editor, which is this. points now where you have this shader editor displaying on your screen is everybody at the same point okay no. uh, i got lost i, I, I hope got you lost can down still hear me Yes, okay, but I got okay. lost at but then the, now you're how you got you the have... shading part. Hello? All right, I'll just go ahead from subsurface, if you can, if you can follow from subsurface. All right? Hold on, sorry. So, so I'll make this yet. bigger so sorry. that we can, we can. Hold on. Okay, okay. So, about, so those of us not in this mode is currently from the um layout at the top part of our screen just click on shading it will take you to the default setting for this mode from the various layout type that place you see layouts modeling sculpting click on shading and it should take you to this to this mode that we are in that is in currently okay okay all right, so if we understand subsurface now, you'd see that you have subsurface color, all right? So there are objects or components that have a particular color on the outer um, surface, maybe the skin, like Deji was trying to use the human skin to explain this. If you cut open, you see blood, all right? Blood is red, no matter what the color of the skin is. So the subsurface, if we're working on a skin, if we mind, we can put a red subsurface color, all right? But then it does not affect the surface so much in many materials, except a material that is transparent or a material that is uh, refract re refractive, something that light can go through, all right? The subsurface color is going to influence your material type. So we might not need one for this wood. If we want to put it, we can go ahead to put a brown subsurface as well. All right. Important um, models that you might need to cut through during the animation or during your simulation, engineering simulation. Maybe you're going to disintegrate this wood object. You might need to put the subsurface color as well. All right. Now, metallic. If you follow me, metallic is if this material is a metal object, maybe it's a metal stool, we would need to ramp up this. So, what I did is click and drag to the right to increase and remove but then this wood this is a wood object would not need the metallic all right so i won't put any it would be left at zero then and specular specular is like i think glee all right if it's going to be glittery not shiny not shiny then there is specular tint. They go together. Roughness. How rough do I want my wood material to be? If I want it to be old, and maybe it's not planed, I would increase my roughness. Let's look at the preview here. The preview will tell you better. Now, I'll reduce roughness and then you see how it changes on this side. 
can you guys see it please confirm that you can see this yes we yeah can we can see, see it. it all right so oh. my okay so my wood wouldn't be this smooth okay except i'm working with uh maybe uh an at something that they used to wrap a wood material some of this um wood textured covers plasters or something but then an actual wood would be a little bit rough so i would keep my roughness at you can type in the figures here too you can click and type so i can put it at 0 0.7 then we have this for roughness and anisotropic is for shiny objects, maybe um, shiny plastics or something you want to reflect a lot of light, possibly mirrors too. So I would increase this so that you see how it influences the material at the, on the right. So I'm not having a lot of... Uh, impact because of the roughness i'll show you something now so i'll take down my roughness and increase this and you see that it's having more glow i'll reduce it for you to see that the glow drops did you guys notice anything on the preview right yes yeah we did yes on the preview here on the right as I move my anisotropic, yes, it's more shiny, it's shinier. So this can also work for uh, mirrors. And it, it helps you reflect a lot of light from the object. So I won't be needing much of this. And we have all of these options, all of these options at once in this panel because it is principled BSDF, BSDF, all right? Principled BSDF is Blender's kind of material that combines, that can help you work on very at the same time or on the same panel. Because instead of doing an isotropic here in the principled BSDF, we could go change it here. All right. If you want a mirror, it, you just want a mirror. You don't want something that mixes up other materials. All right. You can go and get an isotropic here. But then we would stick to principled BSDF because we're working with wood. And wood could have multiple textures depending on what uh, your final output is. is tells how the light reflection should show to show you the change it makes now focus on the glow let me let this go focus on this glow. oh the change is little but then there is a change the glow is thinner So anisotropic rotation helps you tell how the reflection of light leaves the body of your object, all right? It could leave uh, at a spot. It could create a spot like this, and it could come to a straight line. But then these other factors we've put, roughness, specular, is going to influence how much of this we experience here. Let me take out specular and take out roughness and you see now watch this glow at the center i want us to see what the rotation does it's not having so much effect in principle bsdf okay let me quickly explain this because i like to use an isotropic rotation a lot i would switch to anisotropic all right see what this material looks like this is direct anisotropic material all right 
the anisotropy is here. And if I increase it, it tells this object will be. It's showing this way here because the light in our uh, material shader or our shader, viewport shader is cannot communicate this. Okay, but so never mind. You'll see that in model when you have your model um, viewport shading. That's your rendered viewport shading showing. Get back to it. Now, rotation. Rotation was why I came to this place to show you the anisotropic rotation. Try to focus on the glow. It's not giving me the vibe I wanted. Okay. So what I'm doing here is the same thing here. You have the same panel on these two sides, okay? Well, not 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 to delay the class. Let's get back to principle BSDF. This is it here. We'll choose our wood color again. How do you switch you see, down the principle BSDF? You oh, okay, it's here. You see where my mouse pointer is? Okay. You click. Okay. Yes, no. and you have all the options here. That's if you want to do it here. You can also do it in this place. All right? If you don't want this panel anymore, you can delete it and add your node. Shader. You have these other ones here. All right? So these are different shaders. Let's put a gloss. Yes, let's put a glossy. So you see, I have a glossy here. If I click, I can. Sorry. So now this means I want glossy to reflect on the surface, on the surface of my material. I want it to be glossy. I have disconnected principled BSDF. So I have replaced it with glossy. And then the roughness will tell how smooth a glossy surface will be. So this looks like uh, maybe an aluminum surface. All right. If you make it smoother by removing roughness, you're going towards stainless steel. All right. It's more reflective. But then that is just one. You can have a glossy object from principled BSDF, depending on how much you put this settings. I'll take away glossy now. Sorry. I'll take away glossy. I deleted and connect back this to our surface. This is how the shader nodes work. All right. put out there to say to be your surface is what results as your surface now we're at anisotropic rotation but then i'll bring my roughness because this wood is too shiny and then i'll take down my specular okay sheen i don't use sheen so much and i think it has to do with reflection too Okay. Most times roughness has to be a way for these things to show themselves. So you see that sheen is is reflective too. The reflection goes a little bit when I reduce it and increases when I drag it up. So but we'll leave it at zero and bring our wood. So the focus here is wood. You wouldn't need all of these settings on every material you want to work on. You just need a few of them. 
So depending on the material, since we're focusing on wood here, I can put my roughness to points. We are using 0 0.7, which is 0 0.7. Hello. Can't hear you. Oh, but service is terrible today. I don't know. Even on my end, I got disconnected earlier. Like twice, actually. But I think I'm picking up from where it stopped. So we can pick up on where it stops. Let me go back to Hello, Dozier, can you hear us? Yep, service. Okay, let me share my own screen. Go back to pick up on where it stops. Can you see my screen now? No. Not How about now? No. Let me know once you can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Excellent. Um, this is bad. I'm not enjoying this back and forth. Hello, Dizzy. Yes, Daddy. Yes. Service. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Should I go on or will you continue? Yes, you can go. I'll, con I'll con continue. Okay, share your screen then. Okay. Confirm that you can see my screen now. Yeah, we can see that. Yes, sir, I can see. That's it. All right, all right. So the rest. this i'll focus on important ones so that we'll do something with this tool eventually ior in modeling software sorry, sorry talks about mirrors uh, i think sorry. it's Hello. something refraction okay sorry yeah so is it possible to connect yes, more than yes, a node ahead. to the surface do you get that did someone have a question Question or was it? Yeah, I said, I said, is it possible to connect more than one node to the surface load? I guess I'll just start with that. Not as well, you can, you can, one? but then, yes, you can include more nodes if you want to. You go to the shader, you can bring glass and do this. Oh, okay. It's going to replace it. So you can't have more than one node. What you do if you want that, you just have to use principled BSDF and try to achieve uh, the texture with the settings. Okay. All right. So whatever node you send to this place, replace it. Okay. So this answers the question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Let me just. Can I add to that? So, I was talking about IOR. Yes, please. Okay. Um, if you if one um node can't if one node um BDSF can't carry what you want to do, it's possible to mix two nodes together using the mix shader. Hello. Oh. Yes, I will. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. You can use, you can use, 
Okay, if I use the mix shader to mix multiple nodes together, and uh, um, if you go to the add patterns, okay, yeah, mix shader. You apply the two different shaders to the two shader part and you drag that shader order into the materials post parts. Oh yeah. yes, I almost missed that. Thanks, Eddie. So yeah, no problem. Wow, thank you, sir. Oh, okay, right. just have like an intermediary between the two. Yes, since yes, no single. Okay. So nice. Thank you. Exactly. Six shader panel just serves the function of putting different shaders so if you have glass and principled bsdf we'd put our mix shader it's in shader here as well all right mix shader this comes up and you can drag this so you have the two shaders reflecting on the surface this way so this is what you have okay let's get it out Or we can leave mix shader since it still works. So since we have mix shader and it's just one, um, it's, it's going to remain what we have if we just send this straight. So it's the same thing here. And to add to this, if we have this other shader I removed, glass, all right? Here, this fact. The factor here is factor, all right? It tells how much of the two shaders should come out at the output, all right? So if you ramp it up, it means you're leaning towards glass shader because glass shader is at the lower part. And if you're ramping it down, it means you want to lean towards the principled BF, BSDF, all right? So it's usually the default comes with half. It shares them equally, 0.5. All right, so I'll just keep glass here, but even if it's here, it's not in use, so we can't have any results on the output. IOR, which is where I stopped. I was talking about mirrors. I'll ramp it up immediately to see how we, you see, it has a lot of, it has not even come out and the figure is high already. So it's going to be effective for mirrors. If it identifies that your anisotropic is active, not zero, your IOR is going to give a um, tangible results, significant results in the output. So I'm going to take it back to zero because we don't need it for a wood material. Now, rather is uh what part what type of material should this have that will have um, something like dust on it should it look uh like it has particles okay let's ram this up and see oh that's fast okay now i think i'm i i don't know if you guys would see this as much as i'm seeing it it's giving something like the balls that hang on a christmas tree if any of you have seen that material it's like a sweat kind of uh, material but it's not it's not fabric okay mm -hmm yeah yeah all right so that's what transmission does and then there's transmission roughness how much of that uh, particle do you want to come out of this object eventually do you want it to be rough like test coat paint this stone based paint all right so i don't i'm not going to use this at emissions emission is black here so that this wood material does not serve as a light emitter or it doesn't radiate any 
colors. But if he, it looks like want to say, uh, I don't know how what would well. You see lamp holders that have this cover on side walls. The light is not coming out directly, so you have this reflective, I um, mean, uh, emitting feel from the material that glows. That's the better word. It will glow. It will glow from inside it. So I'll make it very white. And you see how it looks here. Looking at our material, it's looking like it's a wood. So you need this maybe for car headlamps when you're designing. All right. You want your car headlamps to just, you want to show that that is a light point. You can use the emission you can increase the emission strength so let me make it white again and increase the strength does this explain it more yes sir Hello, Dozi. Hmm. Service, service, service. Okay, so we're on emission, right? Yeah, we're on emission and emission strength. Emission and emission strength, they're used to make any objects act as a light source. Um, those stuff I used to make any objects act as a light source. Let me just come back to, let me screen share so you can see my own screen. Can we see my screen now? Yes. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Perfect. So um, emission is just to make any object act as a light source. So I was on something else before. I got called here. I'll just leave it at this so you can see the various textures that's working. So let's, let me add an emission to this. Bring it out to white. Okay. Me is this, sir. That's so he designed this. Huh? I said you model this. Oh yeah. Wow. Thank you. So let's go back to the mission. I must use something else because this one color is affecting another color on the screen. Or screen. That's why the walls also change. Well, let me use something that is unattached. So emission. Let's bring the emission color up and bring the strengths. Let's see. 300 and you can see that it's kind of gives off lights let me come to the viewport shading mode so you can see it clearly the viewport shading mode that's going to take some time because this scene is quite heavy that's why it's taking some time to load up you can see my um scene collection see the way it's full it's going to run a bit slowly really i'm in cycles so it was a bad decision. Sorry. No, I think this is a. That means a new plane, a new scene. I didn't cast it down so you can see how the colors and um, affects the scene. It really makes the scene come to life when you have the proper textures designed around. But it's making my laptop slow because everything, because it's a bit heavy. So it's kind of slowing my system down. 
Let me try and leave this. Come to another bit. Come on, boy. Oh. And sorry for the day. Um, if, like it was explained, if you uh, model a car, you have to make the um the headlights emissive, the headlights of the car emissive, and similar to like now, in that's um what I did was a sitting room there. So like now you have to make the light bulbs emissive also, and you also have to make um if you are in a, in a living room, you have to make a sort of like a TV screen emissive, so you can give off lights and emissivity for those of us that this science is when an object gives off radiation, especially right radiation, it's emitting. Now it means to emit. And um, this is taking a lot longer than usual. Come on, boy. Okay, and um, let me just continue with what I'm out. If you notice in our scene with our principal BSDF, we have these um, little dots beside each mode, beside each um, slider. Sorry, we are kind of have these dots beside each slider. And the what that, eh, yeah, like an asterisk. What that does is allows us to import um, other nodes into that specific value. Yes. You start with Hello, do you understand what that means? Yes, sir, is your WhatsApp that is showing me? Yes, sir. I you know, trying to do the system is hanging because of the size of the blender. I'm trying to leave it. Okay. Okay, so we can see these asterisk points here. They are used to um, connect other nodes into the specific value. It's kind of like the asterisk that drags from the BSDF, BSDF node to the surface shader um, over the top of the principal BSDF. Let me stop sharing my screen for you a little bit. Let me get it sorted. So that scene was very heavy. That's why it crashed me. That's why it's making my system slow down because I'm connected to the internet and doing a lot of other things at the same time. Well, what is this to be going right today? Well, let's try and move on. I didn't optimize my system because I'm, I didn't expect we don't take any class. But I've not been having this problem before. Um, so, let me come back here then. This is interesting answer. Can we still see my screen? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Oh, we're finally on render. Let's let's leave here yeah, completely so avoid that problem again. Let's do something new. Okay, sorry, please. Let me just quickly show this out. So stop hanging, I don't live here. No, you will still experience this on your own, don't worry. But uh, like I said, Blender is quite light. If you check this, for, the, for all the things you can do, it's quite light. But once you start working on it, it can vastly increase in, in, in the operating power is taken. And as I, the fact that I was opening a large scene on Blender kind of shut down my entire computer. I didn't prepare my computer for it. I had too many windows open. I would have closed down some things. Usually, I'll close that something to open a scene that is quite large. Um, let's come on, boy.
Look at looks my best friend. Oh, God.